Hi, my name is Chris Auckland. I am a homeopathic vet and part of the founding group of homeopathy at Wellia Level and also whole health agriculture. I'm here to introduce this video where we're going to be interviewing a, uh, a homeopathically trained farmer on how she uses homeopathy to support her sheep being as healthy as they possibly can. Um, the lady, Lindy, Lindy Hutchinson, has been using homeopathy for many years now. She did the homeopathy at Wellia Level course and from that point she's integrated the homeopathy very effectively to improve the overall health of her farm. One of the key things when you're using homeopathy is to make sure you're using it appropriately. On the homeopathy at Welly Level course we teach the effective and responsible use of homeopathy. And one of the ways we aim to achieve this is to get farmers to use a holistic triage approach to what they do. And what we mean by this is to make sure that whenever you have a problem on your farm, you always look at the, the red level first, just to make sure that the problem isn't so serious that it needs the vet. If it is that bad, then our advice is to call the vet. Once you've assessed that level to see whether the red treatment's needed, then always go back down to your to green level again, to then just double check your husbandry to make sure that there's nothing specific you need to do different in the way you're looking after your animals. Now, once you've done this and you've topped and tailed, checking the red level and the green level, you can now come back to the amber, and that's where we place the homeopathy. And you'll find that there'll be all number of things that you can do very effectively and very usefully to help keep your livestock happy and healthy and vibrant. So without more ado, I'm going to introduce Linny Hutchinson and uh, she'll talk you through on a question and answer basis uh, a number of the common presenting problems you might well find if you're looking after sheep. I very much hope you find this a useful video. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we're down in Sussex and we're on the sandstones and the clays overlying. So we have some wetter fields, we have some drier fields. We run sheep and cattle and we produce organic beef boxes and organic lamb boxes. We have about uh, 200 ewes and then we have all their followers on the farm through the year because we sell monthly. So we have quite a lot of stock on the land um, and we have cattle as well, Herefords, traditional Herefords. I've always kind of farmed naturally and we're, we're organic, obviously registered. And um, But just a want to be able to do something for the animal um, when it's it's ill, but it's not ill enough that, you, that there's something classically you could take it to the vet and the vet would go, oh, yes, this is what it is. Um, sometimes you can see that an animal's not quite right and it would be really good if you could do something about that. And, and right at the beginning, I was sort of reading books and, and looking around and trying to find things um to help with those and then i had a you who um uh it was lambing time and she'd got two lambs on her i think they were only like a day or so old and um she'd obviously gone down a rabbit hole and she'd snapped her back leg between her um above and below the joint so this bit you could actually move um at the, at the elbow if you like of the joint and um i sort of rang the vet but i almost knew what the answer would be um was that you know you just need to shoot her put her down um and i just kind of felt like she deserved better than that um and he did say well if she's not in too much pain you could maybe um splint it give the lambs a bit of a better start get a you know um give them a bit more time with mum and, and milk and you know um before you put them on a bottle so in the end we decided we'd we'd Try. I bet she didn't seem to be in that much pain. She was definitely standing for them to drink and was trying to, you know, hobble about and do her best and carry on grazing. So we splinted it. Um, we gave remedies to help knit the bone back together. And within um, a short while, she was already standing on it and the lambs were all fine and she was fine. Um, um, not long after that, you know, you could walk her gently along and she'd be all right. And, you know, within a month, she was up with the rest of the flock. Everything was fine. If you'd put a dog around that group, she wasn't pushed to the outside. You wouldn't know it, you know, unless you knew which one she was, you wouldn't know, wouldn't know her. And that just convinced me. I mean, you can't break her other leg and leave it to heal on its own and see whether the homeopathy did anything or not. But, you know, it, that kind of made me think, well, there's something, you know, something here. And if it's helping, then that's great. So we did um, Symphytum, which knits, helps knit the bone back together, kelp, foss, um, arnica and to take down the swelling initially, obviously. And we did splint it um, as well, which obviously, you know, helps. 
But um, yeah, she pretty much made a complete recovery. And, and you know, that's amazing, really, because that would have been a ewe lost and two lambs to bottle feed um, with all the, you know, that that wouldn't have, those two lambs wouldn't have grown on as well as they did um, still staying with mum. There's not really much you could do conventionally. Um, so we've turned to doing something homeopathically and found that that animal's recovered again. You know, the balance has swung back and they've, they've gone on to be well and you've kind of forgotten about them in the flock and they're fine. Um, initially, it was quite hard trying to go through books and, and work things out for myself and then came upon the homeopathy at welly level course um, quite early on and that was like a revelation. So everything I've been trying to struggle with in my head and with books kind of fell into a neat way of prescribing and making things right and um, yeah, just put it all together and, and made sense of it. Still lots to learn, but um, it gave me a way to, to work through it and a way to make sense of it. And the confidence that other people are out there doing it and that it, you know, it works for them, um, then why wouldn't it work for me? I understand you use a, a lambing bag for carrying around? Yep, yeah, so I've just got a basic old bag um, that I put everything in that I need. Um, so it would have things like lube that you'd be very familiar with, um, bag with lambing ropes in, um, in there. So that sort of thing that people would be used for, used to lambing wire. I've also got a box of homeopathic remedies. Oh, in okay, there. okay. Um, and then just um, warming jackets, prolapse spoons, that sort of stuff really that I just carry out in the field. Gloves, obviously. Um, dealing with anything nasty um, that I just carry around the field with me because we land outdoors. Yeah, so okay. Out the field. Um, Talk me through um, what you carry around as your, your mini kit, if you like. Okay, yeah. So in actually in the bag and out in the field with us, I have this little old lunchbox, um, <laughs> very handy, that's got a number of remedies in it. And they're the main things you need at the point of lambing. So the, the sort of emergency situation ones. Um, and they're all in there, just in liquid form, so quick and easy to use. Um, a bit of sponge in the bottom of the box to stop them getting broken if you happen to trip over, roll over or fall over when you're catching the ewe. Um, and there's a little bit on the top of the lid that's just a reminder because I have students with me, veterinary students and other students um, who obviously aren't used to homeopathy. So there's a quick reminder about what you use for each thing. Cool. In the, so in the lambing shed normally um, I would put the bigger box, which is this one, um, which has most of the remedies in. And I always, although that comes with a label on the front, I always write the name on the top and what potency it is so that you can quickly grab it in a hurry without having to lift everyone out and look at it. Wow. Yeah, so that's normally at the farmhouse. And when we're lambing, that would be in the lambing paddock, just in the shed. Around. Yeah, so I've also got a box which has got ones that we use often. So something that you're going to be giving, you know, more than once. Um, I keep in this box and I use that in a spray form. So it's just a pump spray. So just press it once it sprays on their nose so that's really easy quick to administer so something you're going to be giving loads of um then like pyrogen to all the lambs um so that would be we would have on the front of the pens in a cut down um, milk bottle but basically just something hung on the pen and it always gets moved to the next pen that um a lamb's about to go into and then we would just use the spray out of that and I know that you have a, a very nice uh, set of notes that you use to guide guide people through because you have a lot of students helping out. So can you just talk us through how you set that up? Yeah, so I just um, so laminated and you can see it's pretty disgusting because we use it literally in the, you know, in the lambing pens. Um, so it's laminated and it just is useful remedies for difficulties at lambing time is what I called it. And it just goes through everything starting with the U. Um, so on this first page, you've got things like prolapse and which remedies you would use. Uh, ring womb if you've got that out in the field um, some of it's repeated on the lid of the emer the box that I carry with me in the field but the ones that are more appropriate to them um, things for abortions pregnancy toxemia uh, claps at labour um, a labour that's going too fast and hard so assisted labours um, labours that get stuck or um, so there's some bits like that and then it moves on to like bruising after labour um, you know postpartum paralysis that sort of thing um, retained fetal membrane, um, metritis, and then moving on to like mastitis after lambing. And then if you turn it over again, um, it goes on to sort of lack of milk, too much milk, um, abscesses. And then there are a few things because we check all our ewes feet before we turn them out um, as, as they go out with their lambs. Um, there's a few things about foot rot and those sorts of things. There's a few hints about fever um, and um, 
those sorts of things in case you get something like that. We've got a few bits about rejecting lambs. Um, there's a couple of bits about stillborn or dead lambs to help. Um, and then there's some bits for the newborn lamb um, on there. Again, we've got hypothermia, collapsed lamb, head injuries, um, prolapsed intestines, joint ills, navel ills, E. coli, rattle bellies, um, pneumonias, and then in trophy and eyes, those sorts of things. A um, little bit about ORF and then some bits about tagging and castrating. So it sort of follows through the process of from being in the field because we lamb outside to then coming into the pen with her lamb to then turning them out into the field. And it's just sort of written out so that it can help my students gather what they need and, and follow that process through. Um, just supposing you've got a ewe that's having a bit of a problem and you've examined her and, and you found that it's, it's not something that necessarily needs the vet to come and deal with at this stage, but you want to give a remedy to help encourage her to you know, uh, get going, perhaps a bit of ring womb or something like that. Uh, what remedy might you be considering using here? So we find uh, colophyllum works really well and simisifuga um, work really well for those. And um, that's uh, colophyllum is probably something that we would have in the little box that we have with us in the bag um, in the field all the time. Um, and usually a few doses of that works really well. Um, that that's yeah, that's one that generally is a first go to um, for that sort of thing. That's yeah, probably one of the the main ones we would use. Yeah. And uh, um, so how quickly do you find these remedies work before you feel you need to do something different? Um, that one's usually if you whack a few drops on the nose, um, wait a few minutes, put a couple of fingers in, just try and try. And then within a few minutes, it, usually that will open out and, and things will move on. Yeah. Usually pretty fast at, at yeah, opening things out and helping them move on. Yeah. Uh, so let's assume that the little lamb just popped itself out and uh, you mentioned um, some possible remedies to help those ones where it's difficult to resuscitate them. Uh, obviously, you've got the, the classic things like, you know, a little bit of straw up the nose or maybe having to swing the lamb to get its lungs cleared out and so on. Um, so you might consider to do those things. Um, but on top of all the regular bits and pieces, what, what remedies are sometimes useful? OK, so tungsten met's really good if it's kind of blue and cyanosed and the tongue's looking a bit awful, you know, especially if you've had found a hung lamb. Um, you know, where its tongue's hanging out and it's looking a bit blue and it's taking you a little while to get the shoulders through or whatever. Tungsten met I always find really good. Carbo veg for those that look completely dead and lifeless but sort of revive um, is another good one. And we'll always, anything that's had difficulty like that, we'll always follow that up with Arnica and then Hypericum. So Arnica for the bruising and battering of that being born and Hypericum because there may well be nerve injuries as it's come through the canal and got trapped a bit. Um, and that would be, you know, the arnica and hypericum for the ewe and the lamb. Because yeah. obviously if the lamb stuck, the ewe's had a hard time too. But the tungsten and the carbo veg specifically for the lamb in those yeah. sort of situations. Yeah. Find those work really well. Yeah. Sometimes, um, despite our best efforts, we, we can lose the odd lamb or two. And so you might have a, have a mum that's now not got any lambs at all. And you want to then maybe foster on uh, from, from a triple or something like that. Um, do you have remedies that help that that, uh, that you take the, um, the fostered on lamb? Yeah, yeah. So I'd use always anything that's had something that's died. I'd use Ignatia, um, which is great for grief and all of those sorts of things. So that's that's sort of first port of call, really, on that front. And um, yeah, fostering on, again, um, we use... Um, we, we often wet foster, so we'll, you know, if there's the opportunity to and, and um, cover it in the other things, or we might skin and then put the skin on the lamb and then get the mum to, to take it. Um, yeah, um, mostly, the I usually find the Ignatia works pretty well. Like a podium, if she's kind of kicking a lamb away of her own, you know, pushing it away, one that is hers is quite a good remedy. That works quite well for the rejecting lambs ones. Yeah. But that's generally when it's one of their own lambs. Um, well, I've used it a couple of times with other people's lambs and that, that works fairly well. Yeah. But most of them I find they take them anyway, they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, sepia, do you use that at all in that situation and, and um, not find you need not, to? Not really, but that's a good one to try actually, thinking about that, yeah, for older girls who've yeah. been around the block a few times and don't want to don't yeah. go again. <laughs> yeah, I guess the older ones, yeah, when they're, they're fed up with yeah, it. Yeah, but yes, no, that's a good thought actually, yeah, yeah that's not yeah. one we've used. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and then we mentioned about um, the, your, your procedure you have routinely for when you're dressing the navels and so on. So you, you use a routine disinfectant and then use the, the remedy pyrogen, you say? Yes. Yeah. So we would um, we use Super 7 as a dip. 
on the navel, which is um, a more advanced sort of, you know, like, like using iodine, but we find dries them down quicker. Um, so you get less joint ills. And um, then we would squirt with pyrogen 200 um, yeah. in the lamb's mouth, just as a preventative for all those things yeah that are around the place where it's been lambed you know that's the nature of the job isn't it that <laughs> it's not it's not particularly clean and you've got the newborn lamb going in there yeah i mean sheep are usually pretty good at cleansing themselves but if you get the occasional one where it's been a bit slow um what remedies do we tend to use in that situation yeah so we'd use sicar um sicarly um as a remedy then um for any retained um you know if we think there's anything still in there um or if we know it hasn't cleansed sometimes out in the field you can't tell because i've eaten it up so quick you don't know whether it was there or not but if we suspect something and um if we think there's a metritis brewing you know something inside still not quite right um then pyrogen again is brilliant for that mm. um stopping that yeah that infection going on inside and, and from time to time, any sheep farm, you, you might need to have called the vet in and perhaps had a, an assisted um, lambing or caesarean. Um, what, what remedies might you give to the ewe in and, on the lamb, in and around that time to, to help it through that experience? Yeah, again, so we, we'd be guarding against a, an interuterine infection. So um, pyrogen is fantastic for that. We'd use arnica for all the bruising, hypericum um, for any nerve damage that may have gone on in the delivery, especially if you've had to deliver a dead one, you know, and there's not much, you know, you can put as much lube in as you like, but it's never the same as getting a live one out. Um, oh, a bellus perennis, really good if um, you think the, the actual bone's been bruised, you know, if you've had a, a big dead or a dead lamb to get out and, and you feel like the ewe's standing really stiffly and, and is really sore, then um, bellus is almost better than arnica um, yeah. in those situations and seems to really help her you know get gain, gain her health back really quickly and and be happy yeah, yeah that makes total sense i mean arnica has that reputation for helping bruising generally and bellis for that deeper bruising doesn't it so yeah 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 no that really helps those ones where it's you know or if you've had a really big lamb with difficult you know difficulty to get out through the shoulders up bellis is probably what i'd reach for rather than arnica yeah um, most sheep farms don't have this very often but sometimes mastitis occurs do you have any particular protocols you use for that any remedies you find useful yeah, so um, you get, as you say, you get the odd mastitis. Some of them are just a tiny bit and you might just see it starting in the milk. And um, so we always, as we as they go into the pen, we always check that, that she's got two lots of, you know, two teats and they're both working. Um, because sometimes you get one that isn't working very well. And if she's got twins, obviously it's better to know straight away. So you can take action than to find out, you know, when you look at the lamb and wonder why it's not doing well. Um, so I always impress upon my students to check every single time they pen a ewe in a lamb that, you know, both teats are there and working. So sometimes you find a little bit that's um, just not coming through and um, phytolacca's fantastic remedy for that. Um, calendula um, heals things up. But there are some, if it's more of a, a mastitis, um, the swollen hot red udder, then there's a good triple one that you can buy and you buy it, the three remedies in one bottle. So it's easy. It's not like you've got to add three things. Um, the Belladonna, Bryonia and Urtica is a good combination one that... Um, you know, if you can pop it in several times, you know, each time you're walking past that pen and put some in her water, um, then that's a really good one for the, you know, kind of red hot steam and you put your hand on it and oof, that's hot. Um, that's a really good one. Um, and then for something that you think, oh, that's a bit hard when you first put your hand under there and it seems like maybe that's been mulling around for a long time or sometimes when they've you've turned them out and they've been out in the field for a while and then you pick one up, so a sort of older mastitis where it's sort of yellowy in the milk and um, it just feels harder and not, not quite so good. Um, there's another combination one you can buy, which is sulfur, silica and carbo veg. And that's again, three in one. So you've only got to just drip it in um, individually. And those, those are two quite good protocols to use. You know, there's specific ones, obviously. Um, and you could use each of those, Belladonna, Bryonia and Urtica individually but they're quite good for just in the heat of lambing you know when you've got hundreds of ewes running through sometimes that's why i did these notes so that you can just quickly look at it remind yourself you don't have you know your brain's full of other things you can just do it and, and quickly put it in and that works quite well those triple ones um alongside those we'd usually put in a mixed mastitis nose ode um into her water and on her uh, nose and mouth so the, the, the lamb's getting better and hopefully um, the ewe's doing well as well. Uh, and then we get to get to weaning time, don't we? And um, what, what sort of strategies do you have for remedies around that time? Because that's often quite stressful. Yeah, that's one of the big stresses for the lambs, I think. And um, 
we tend to wait and we wing, wing. When you notice most of the ewes are starting to walk over the lambs, you know, when they run under and kind of lift their feet off the ground and she just walks over them or knees them off with her knees. And when most of them are doing that, that's when we'll wean. We tend to leave the lambs in the same field, move the ewes away so that there's less stress on the lambs. And we'll give Ignatia to all of them, so both the ewes and the lambs. And um, an easy way to do that is usually you've penned them to sort them into ewes and lambs, obviously to load the ewes and, or, or walk them out of the field into another field. And if you just put it in a garden sprayer um, and then you can just spray it over the pen as they're all standing there, they'll virtually all look up to see what you're doing. And by the time they've done that, it's landed on their nose. And we'll back that up by putting it in the water trough as well. So, and if you're loading them into a trailer, then that is is good as well because you can just the slats on the side of the trailer, the air slats, you can just pop it in there and just squirt, and they'll all look up to see what you're doing. And again, it goes all over them on their noses, so they're all getting a dose of it. And again, you can just put it in the trough. So it's you're you've kind of got them all together anyway. It's no extra effort just mm. to spend twenty seconds just kind of going sh 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 across the pen with a you know with a little garden sprayer um you know handheld little jobby and um and do that and that that's a simple way of doing it or just putting the putting it in the trough you know yeah so there's the old, old pink eye when you've got a bit of an eye infection um do you have favorite remedies you find useful around that time yeah so coming? i think um for us right if you catch it right at the beginning which often with sheep with cows that's much easier to see because you kind of you're looking at all of them and their eyes sort of every day but um with sheep sometimes you don't see both eyes as you walk along the field and check they're all right but if you do see it just starting to, to dribble then um euphrasia and aconite are, are usually pretty good at, at starting that off you know knocking it on the head before it becomes anything more if you've noticed it and it started to be a little bit more then um then mercor coney and mac those are good ones we find for that um and and if it if it's like um you know gone gone um sort of white and horrible then um silica is really good for clearing that up if it's more of an eye injury do you know what i mean like if they've you know caught their eye on something or the field's a bit thistly and they've maybe caught it then then that's good and we'd use those same ones um so if you've got a lamb that's got in trophy and eye um and you dealt with it but there was a little bit of you know scarring or scratching then silica is really good for that or right at the beginning if you've just noticed it started to turn in and you've done it um then we'd often wax some euphrasia in there um, mm. and that that helps them as well okay. just helps clear it up before it becomes something more really so sometimes there might be a uh, the feet might not be great so there might be a bit of foot rot going on do you have remedies do you use to help strengthen the feet up or clear up infections like that yeah when we first came here 20 years ago we had um, a bit more trouble with foot rot we hardly ever have any now but um, then we used to use foot rot nosode um, quite a lot that's quite good to use alongside things and that helps Silica is really good for build, rebuilding the horn. Um, that's that's pretty good. And um, if they, if you've got an infection again, if maybe they've stood not stood on something, um, we've got quite a lot of blackthorn hedges. You know, we're a wilderness farm with with small fields and hedges. Um, and if you've got bits of blackthorn or something and they've stood on that, got a hole in their foot and it's all gone septic and horrible, Hepsol's great for getting that kind of pus out and taking all that down. Mm -hmm. And then you can follow that up with, you know, hypericum and calendula to kind of take the nerve pain out and, and clean up the wound um, and they'll help with that. So if you've got a rot that's gone in with a nasty thorn or something, mm -hmm. quite often if you feel like it's hot and it looks pussy or it's coming out over the top, you know, more of an injury than just a foot rot from a, you know, um, a rub, then that, yeah, that Hepsolf really helps with those. The, the, the old orf problem, which I mean, no, not all farms have, but they can have from time to time or off they get. It might not be every season. Do you have a strategy used towards orf? Yeah, orf nose odes are really, really good. We have some fields that are a bit more thistly than others. Um, and um, our, a lot of our grazing moves around on a rotation. So we have some permanent pasture and then some that is arable land that falls into part of the grassland rotation at times. And so sometimes you can get a, an outcrop of sudden thistle that you, you, know, you, you wouldn't normally have. So if we're turning a, um, lambs out into a field that we know has got quite a lot of thistles in a, in a patch, um, we'll put orf nose out in the trough as a present, preventative. Um, if we happen to see a little bit of orf on something, we'll dose that lamb with it and we'll also put some in the trough as, as the preventative for the rest of the flock. And pretty much you can go back up and go, oh, yeah, I better check on that one. And you, yeah, it's, it's dealt with it. It's, right. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of orf as a big problem. It, um, it's something you can easily deal with you know, in that way. 
you want to just run through a little summary of the different ways that you find useful to get a remedy into a sheep? Yeah, so mostly, as long as you can drop it on the nose, um, generally they'll lick it, lick the nose to see what, what you did. Um, you could open the lip and, and put it in. Um, I tend to squirt it on the nose. So I have some of the things, the things that I'm going to use often or a lot in a squirter bottle. So you just, you know, push the down, point it at them. That's easy. Um, most remedies, if you order them in liquid form, they come with a dripper top. So you can just turn it up and it will drip. So that's easy because you can just hold it over their nose and it drips and they'll generally look up at it anyway. I tend to find if, if it's the it's silly, maybe I'm not I'm not right. But if, if you feel like it's the bang on right remedy, they'll be going and trying to lick it out and take the bottle out of your hand. So that's quite good. And when I first started, I bought some that have um, more like if you use rescue remedy, you might find it comes like this with a glass tube and you have to suck it up into the tube and then administer it. That's actually harder because you've got an open bottle, you're trying to hold a sheep and you've got a glass tube and you're trying to drop it on their nose. So I find personally that the plastic dripper tops where you've just, you know, you can turn the whole bottle upside down and it'll only come out a drip at a time is much better because you're not going to lose the rest of it on the floor if, if the sheep kicks or you, 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 you know, you lose them. So I find that easier. Put it in the water trough, that's very easy. If you've got a whole group to do, just a little handheld garden sprayer like you've missed your plants with, um, just mix it up in there and then just spray the whole lot of them. Um, that's probably the easiest ways. If you've got something that's quite hard to give to administer it or something you're giving day after day and they're getting fed up of it, on a little bit of food and then give that, that's another easy way to do it. I find the liquid remedies personally easier than the, the tablets, the pillules. Um, I've seen a cow eat all the food in the bucket that you put in there and then the tablet's still at the bottom, you know, even with a rough tongue, how do they do that? Little tiny tablet left. Um, so a liquid is just on the food and then it's gone, isn't it? What things have you found most useful over the years to keep yourself going, keep yourself inspired, to learn more information? Uh, what have you found useful? Um, so a variety of things, really. Um, on the hall course, well, in my day, we were given cassette tapes to learn in between sessions. I guess now it's probably done online, but um, they were really good. And I still sometimes go back and listen to some of those. Um, the books, there's a lot of human written books. There's one I use for lambing, which is all about um, obviously childbirth for, for women, um, which is useful. Um, so there are lots of things like that. But one thing that's really useful is the local groups that we have. So like a local support group um, where we come together um, with a vet and um, just work through a load of remedies for a subject. So maybe like wounds or septic things or infections or um, mastitis or whatever and spend an evening just going through those things and it's it's good because not only are you kind of keeping your knowledge fresh and refreshing things that maybe you don't see very often on your farm but might come across um so it's not the things you're particularly familiar with but also you build relationships with those people and then you might oh so and so yeah i remember she had a bad case of that i'll ring her up and just chat it through on the phone while i'm looking at my animal and that's that's really helpful and it's it's good to know that other people are out there using those things and that you know it's it's you can gain support from from them as well so i think you're always i mean there's hundreds of remedies and you're always learning and and something that you you know some as you get better things don't become such a problem on your farm but something else creeps in the weather changes or you know uh, uh, one year the weather throws up a different problem or the grass might be different and those can all bring new problems on so you you, know, you never stop learning really So thank you very much, Lenny. This has been really helpful and um, I hope this can inspire um, other, other farmers in Scotland to, to want to be able to use homeopathy and the smallholders as well. And uh, uh, if, if um, people want to get in contact with you, can they do that uh, via the hall yeah. or the WAG website, if yeah, that possible? That's fine. Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I really hope you got inspired and informed with some of the amazing experiences that Lily's had with her successes with homeopathy. Uh, as she pointed out, it, it is a journey, it's a learning curve where you're always learning, you're always improving and always finding ways to, to tackle the different problems you have on your farm. If you want to find out more, then do contact homeopathy at Welly level or Whole Health Agriculture and the organisers of this conference will be able to give you the website connections so that you can get more information as you need to. So good luck with the use of homeopathy on your farm and may you get some great results. Thank you for watching.